I was given a personal tour of one of the most high-tech pest control production facilities in the country and in today's video I'm going to take you behind the scenes with me and share with you some of the amazing science, testing, and production that goes into pest control products that protect your home from pests like termites, roaches, spiders, ants, and more. Nysis Corp produces some of the most famous and popular pest control products in the world like Niban, Timbor, Boracare, Foam Fresh, back a zap dsv web out nibor d and more you know those wood poles that stick out of the ground that hold up your telephone internet electricity that goes to your house each one of those poles are treated with products that prevent them from decaying and breaking down over time so that the pole doesn't fall over in the middle of the night I'm here at Nysis Corporation. They are testing products they use to treat telephone poles. Each one of these poles are being tested with a new product. They have been in the ground for years and years, making sure their products are holding up to the test of time. They're also testing their other wood treatment products on all kinds of wood that is found in your house from the seal plate, floor joists, things like railroad ties, two by fours, everything that's used to build your house is being tested here at Nysis Corp in Rockford, Tennessee. All right, we're going to the lab first. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Required Love to wear it. safety glasses in the lab. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm supposed to be wearing safety glasses doing a lot of my sprays, so I'm working on that as well. So this is our research and development lab, and this is where we do all of our innovation work, creating mm -hmm. new products and coming up with new ideas, and it all happens here. We mix it and we make it. Wow. And um, we have a couple things so mixing right now. Yep. Nope. What's specifically mixing? It's proprietary. Oh, but yes. good. <laughs> the you, next big products coming. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So there's a bunch of like base products here. Then you kind of formulate them at different ratios or different. That's it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we come up with all different ways to mix new things and yeah. uh, make something new. Make something exciting for the pest control industry. That's awesome. What is this machine here? This looks very high tech. So this is an inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectroscopy instrument. So oh, wow. for Can short, you repeat that? it's uh, an ICPOES. Okay. Uh, so we use this for elemental analysis and it can help us give elemental breakdown of any of the things that we make. Wow. Yeah. Um, so right now over in the corner, one of our analysts, uh, Cameron, is working on nine bands. So he's actually Ooh. extracting the active ingredient out of our nine band granule, and he's getting ready to analyze that on our titrators. Wow, that's amazing. So there's nine band granules inside. There is. Speakers. Yep. Let me see. Make sure it's wow. not too hot. So you can lift it up and you can actually see the nine band granules in the bottom. That's amazing. I love it. That stuff looks familiar. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What's the most expensive piece of equipment in this room? Definitely, ooh, it's probably a tie. It's probably a tie between the particle size analyzer and the HPLC UV Viz. Okay, that's the particle um, analyzer yeah. is this guy yeah. in the corner? Yeah, the particle size analyzer is, is this guy right here with the flow sink. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that one, these are about about tied at around sixty thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But the ICP OES is the most expensive one. That, that, that was in the other room. That was in the R and D lab. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. one's closer to around ninety thousand dollars. That's what you're paying for when you buy Niban. <laughs> <laughs> Years of research, expensive yes. products. Yeah. yeah, you couldn't make it at home for that price. No. <laughs> I'm not sure you'd want to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> finished product aisles and you can see the bottom row is usually where we pick boxes to fill orders so that's yeah. why the wrap is kind of torn because we grab individual items off of the bottom shelf yeah to fill orders. love it i got a question for you guys so your facility reminds me of some factories we have to, to do a regular monthly pest control service on so do you guys have a regular pest control service here <laughs> our employees. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Yeah, we do it all ourselves. Yeah, we do it That's ourselves. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Cool. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do it in house. You can definitely tell what our, <laughs> our top sellers are because you'll see like whole aisles dedicated. So this is oh, a, my goodness. a Niban aisle. Wow. Straight through. So much Niban. <laughs> this is the Boric Hair aisle. Yes. Yep. Whole aisle. Boric Hair. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. This is sort of, this is our flagship product, so this is the very first thing developed on us. Really? Yeah, one of the mm -hmm. first ones, this one and Niban, yeah, those are the first ones. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I remember one of the first products I ever used when I started working for a pest control company in Alabama was a board here doing yeah. mold sprays in the crawl space. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah. It's a staple in the industry. Packaging peanuts a necessity. Yes. yes. <laughs> Lots of logistics you don't think about. No, yeah. This is the end all be all for like drinks. <laughs> Yes. There's no drain flies around here. That's right. No, <laughs> yeah. no. That's right. So these are all raw materials. So this is all um, some of our grades that go into our bugs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys actually have rail coming in, we dropping do. off? Yes, but you can. Oh, so you've actually treated these? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna walk track. down here and take a take yeah. a look. So we have more things up here, so don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. We don't okay. Break leg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All these borate products that they use, they're incredibly efficient at preserving wood. Like I said in other videos, 30 years or more of protection. So they've got darker colored ones here, lighter colored ones here. These are just different products they've used, but it looks like to me they're all doing, doing great. It just rained here, so some of them still look wet, but this is really, really cool. I mean, it's crazy. There's actually a train that comes in and delivers product and takes it away and they're treating the wood on the railroad ties that is actually being used in their business. So they're kind of putting their money where their mouth is, which is great. <laughs> After admiring their beautiful saltwater aquarium, I got to sit down with the president of NYSIS Corporation, Lee Barrett, and here are some of the highlights of the discussion. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So just tell me, introduce yourself really quick and then tell me what you do here at NYSIS. And my, name is Lee, my name is Lee Barrett. I'm with NYSIS Corporation. I'm the president and CEO of NYSIS Corporation. All, all I do is just make sure that everybody gets it's a chance to do what they love to do so um, that's basically what I, I do I, I have great people that work for me um, yeah. and work for the organization and, and I could not do it without them I guess it's it's something that my nature of being able to get out there with, with the folks to be able to do the right thing and I got great people that, that make that happen that's awesome Lee yeah how long mm -hmm. have you been the president Ooh, uh, it seems like a long time but it's not a long time I've been been the president since October of 21 Okay. Yes, yes, awesome. yes, yes. And prior to that, I was the divisional vice president for the pest control side of our business. Okay. So you worked your way up within the NISIS? Yes, yes, I have. That's yes. awesome. Yes, yes. No, it's been, a, again, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure. I'm always a big proponent of promoting internally. Right, yeah. right, right, right. We, we do the same thing here. I mean, we'd like the opportunity to... Um, to make sure that for those who, who bring who bring or add things to our business, to make sure that they understand that there's growth within the company. Mm -hmm. And NYSIS Corporation has always been that opportunity. I mean, I have, I've had different roles, different positions, and it's an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to kind of pivot and understand different marketplaces. But we have, in the last, I say in the last six, seven months, we have added some new people from, from the outside, but mm -hmm. it's a big family. It's yeah. a big family that understands exactly what we're trying to do. And, how we're trying to do it, and they they do it well. I think yeah. new people have been doing a phenomenal job. Yeah, phenomenal job. I was um, told earlier you guys have about seventy employees here in total. Correct. Which I, I didn't really know exactly how many you would have, but it, it seems like a low number, which is surprising considering how big Nisus is of a you know entity inside the pest control industry, product industry. It's like you know one of the big players, and it yeah, like it's a small team, but. It, it, it is it is it is a small team in a big scale of things, right? It's yeah. a it's a very effective team. Yeah. The the great thing about this is that most of that team is our probably in production. Um, we we do have a we have a phenomenal sales staff. We have an incredible incredible marketing staff. Again, when, they, when you're talking to social media and you're talking about trying to get a message, mm -hmm. they 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 hit it out the box. And a lot of folks can see that. And a lot of our print ads, a lot of our how we go to market, be it social media, mm -hmm. and and how we go to market. But majority of those folks are in the production area for, for us. I mean, and those guys do a phenomenal job. Yeah. Phenomenal job. Great. They get the message out um, amongst themselves when it comes to safety. That's a very key. I think you, you probably saw that when you did the actual tour. Mm -hmm. The safety was a major, major issue. Yes. Um, but we, we seem to be doing all right, though, when, when it comes to that. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. Well, thanks, Lee. I've got a couple questions to ask okay. you. Okay. So, okay. Um, let's start with if you briefly explain NYSIS's, uh development and research and innovation process. I, I, to me, it seems like NYSIS is at the forefront of innovation in the pest industry. Okay. Um, so maybe you could just elaborate on how you guys innovate. Here. How do we? How do we get there? How yeah. do we get there? Yeah. That's 
that's very good to hear um, that we are for, for sometimes I feel that we're, we're behind the eight ball, but usually how we get there. A lot of times it happens from the outside, meaning the, the outside sales folks come in with an idea. Mm -hmm. um, the idea or the opportunity to kind of figure out how we're going to get to a certain place or what's the need out there in the market. We might hear about something. Of course, we're not going to bring out a new chemical or anything like that. We're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. But there might be a packaging or it might be a, a, a situation that we can market or, or train um, somebody a little different than everybody else to try to get a message. Yeah. But when it comes into the being innovative and different, we, we throw a lot of things on the wall. Some things stick, some yeah. things don't, right? Yeah. Um, but we make sure that whatever we're bringing out there, it's tested, it's tried, and making sure that it's, it is done the right way. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. I It's interesting. I always find like the pest control industry kind of unique because to me, the bugs are always the same. You know? Right, you're, you're correct. <laughs> so, road to road to road, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. going to change over millions of years, but it's the customer needs and the new technology that comes out across the planet that we can incorporate into the industry to make you know the tech technicians' jobs easier or the results better for the customer. Yeah. So yeah. There's lots. May, it may seem like it's simple, but there's actually a lot of innovation that can't happen. There, there is a lot of innovation that can happen, and you, you are correct. There's, there's, uh, you know, sometimes you look at it and say, hey, well, how many, how many times can I train for a particular pest, right? Yeah. Um, I think that with our people, or especially our folks outside, getting that right solution of training and understanding, mm -hmm. we try to be the first to actually do that. We want to be the ones who are that 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 pest com companies go to for that. Um, we might not have all the answers on on the, the pesticides or the type of chemical they're going to use, mm -hmm. but we do feel that we can train those people so they can have those answers. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. I'm kind of based on the same principle. How do you see the pest control industry evolving over the next five to ten years? Dan, that's a very very good question. I think I think the industry is rapidly evolving, and I think you're. You're seeing that third generation, fourth generation kind of coming into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole different, a whole different avenue in how you're going to get that person to listen to you. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have to market to them differently. You have to have safer, if you could even say that, greener products out there. Mm -hmm. But you also have to have products that have solutions to at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I think the industry is evolving with communication a lot faster than we ever had. Mm -hmm. And also too, there there is also products that are being taken away as much. So yeah. that new that new generation is not going to have the options of so many different products. So it's going to be very minimal. But again, the key is is just what's that message? Um, what are those products going to do? Is it going to harm the earth? Is it going to harm get in our waterways? What's it going to do? So it, I think that's what we're looking at in the next five to ten years is definitely what. Is it going to do to? Uh, is it going to affect the market? Is it going to affect the world? Mm -hmm. Is it going to affect the backyard if you're having your your, your kids playing it? So it's I think that's that is the next journey in the five to ten years is what's happening at the end of the day. Yeah, it starts with the customer and then it goes to the pest control professional. Correct. And then our demands come up to nicest corporation or companies like you. Right. So it's it's really a, a multi level process and and I've seen this this recently in just my few years in the industry. The customers' demands are increasing. They want to know exactly how the product works. They want to know exactly how it affects, you know, things that aren't the pests. Like, how does it affect my plants, or how does it affect my pets, Correct. or the Correct. butterflies and bees? You know, so no. I, and I, and and you make a very good point. It's it's at the end. It sometimes it hits you first, or sometimes it hits the manufacturer, but it, it hits the pest control operator first, mm -hmm. and then now the, the manufacturer has to make a decision on, hey, what what are we willing to do? What what do we need to do? Um, we want everybody to be safe at the end of the day, right? We want everybody that to, to have a great quality of life at the mm -hmm. end of the day, um, from the folks even out there who are manufacturing the product as well. Yeah. So we 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 have to look at it that industry is changing. We're not. It's not going to stay the same. We know yeah. that. That then five. Five years or ten years from now, there is going to be a some way, a faster way, probably a better way, possibly, out there to kind of do things. But we need to make sure that that information gets put down or transferred or shown, so everybody understands exactly what they're using. Yeah. Uh, so that's that is it. That's probably the, the biggest change that you'll see. That I'm definitely definitely that the marketplace is to say that it's not changing or not evolving. Yeah. No, that's that's not that's definitely not. 
the pistol toy industry is is ever evolving, ever changing. So yes, that's, that's one thing. For awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lee. No, thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Of course. Appreciate it. You guys have an amazing operation here. Thank and you. And I'm looking forward to showing the world your your products and what you guys do. We have amazing people who are work work here. Um, it's 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 definitely an honor to to be able to lead these folks. They they have done it for a while now. We have an awesome team outside our technical folks, our marketing team, um, our staff, executive staff. It's a great team. Yeah. And um, I'm happy to see what they've done. I'm happy to see the future, that there is a future, that there is a possibilities out there, and they do a great job doing it. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. All Thanks, right. Lee. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. Next, I got to interview Dr. Jeff Lloyd, where we talked about the specific science behind wood treatment products and how they work. This is Jeff Lloyd. Dr. Jeff, Jeff Lloyd. Dr. Jeff. Hey, hi. How are you doing? Good. Good to see you. So, those railroad ties we just looked at outside, they have multiple different treatment uh, experiments going on. Can you explain, like, just briefly, like, the different product you're testing and different, you know, standards, whether it be, like, you know, uh, getting exposed to moisture outside, but obviously they're all outside. You're not okay. testing any that are indoor no. right now. Okay. So that's, uh, that's an actual track, that's a rail spur, mm -hmm. and the traditional preservative that's been used in the United States is creosote, but it's got some issues with carcinogenicity and skin burns and mm -hmm. difficult to dispose of the wood at end of life. Mm -hmm. So there's a much newer, more environmentally friendly product, copper naphthenate, okay. and so one of the things we're doing in that test is comparing the copper naphthenate performance with the creosote performance. We, we expect the copper naphthenate to be about 20 to 30 percent better and the creosote. And then the other thing we test in, in that test is a borate treatment. Mm -hmm. And borates are quite novel in the way they're able to diffuse into the hardwood. So a traditional creosote treatment or even a copper naphthenate treatment does a good job at protecting the sapwood of the mm -hmm. tree. Mm -hmm. But in a hardwood, you can't penetrate that unless mm -hmm. you use a diffusible preservative like borate. So we also have that in the test as well. Interesting. So those railroad ties, are they a combination of softwood and hardwood? They're all hardwoods, but for hardwood. there's sapwood and hardwood within the same tie. Right, yeah. oh yeah. And only the borate can diffuse into the hardwood. And that's also true of softwood. So for example, in new construction treatment, when you have a pressure treated silk blade, only sapwood is treated. Mm -hmm. So when you cut that pressure treated silk blade, the building code requires you to apply a borate on that end cut, for example, for the house of meat code, mm -hmm. because the uh, envelope treatment, the, the pressure treatment, doesn't treat that hardwood. Right, yeah, that makes sense. And most homes are built with softwood, is that correct? Like a That's pine? correct, yeah. Okay. yeah. Unless you're using uh, kind of an old, unless you're using a log cabin, which might be yellow pot blow or something like that, yeah. most homes, if it's pressure treated wood, it would be southern yellow pine. Mm -hmm. And then if it's studs, it's typically SPF, which is a mixed species group of spruce pine fir. Mm -hmm. And then you might have some um, some other species as well. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Well, thank you, Dr. Jeff. Hey, well. How long have you been in this industry studying? Uh, so I've been in this industry now about 30 years, uh, maybe 35 years now, yeah, 35 years now. Yeah. And I've been with NYSIS for the last 20. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. Very valuable yeah. assets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yes. Well, thank very you. nice to meet you. Thanks nice for your time. Well. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, very that's cool. Cool t-shirts. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, um, I think you have more industry experience than I have life experience. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah that's probably <laughs> I'm getting a little bit great. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. That's great. Yeah, I yeah. think that's that's great. Perfect. Thank, thank you, you, Jeff. I appreciate you doing that. The other thing to look at out there, if you're interested, the the blocks. 